Hello again. So this is the final video of the series showing how to plan a leg of a trip, of a cross-country trip in an airplane. And we've looked at four different flight calculators, how to use them to calculate the, the legs, the duration of the legs, and our, uh, all the different parameters we need to know, uh, including time, fuel, and all of that. This final one, we're going to use one of the calculators. I'm going to use the poolies uh, because I think this is that or an E6B uh, is the best thing to have in an airplane because you really need only one hand to use it to calculate the um, our, our times during the flight. So first we're going to set up that section uh, on the um, the flight side of you of you want of the um, flight plan guide or flight plan log and we're going to do um, an example of uh, you know assuming some some distances some lot sometimes to do the different legs and then show you how we would actually do it so here we go um, first I have the map the way I had it before if you recall we were going from uh, Rockcliffe to uh, Constance Lake and then down to here, you don't see on, on the picture here, Kingston, but you don't need to for the purpose of this video. So I've selected two checkpoints along the way, uh, other than my set heading point. One would be Carlton Place over here, and then the other one would be Perth over here. So um, first I need to transfer a few pieces of information from the flight plan side here. So the ETE, overall ETE, is going to be 51 minutes. And the, um, time, the time required after the set heading point would be 41 minutes. So I'm going to put that down right here. Um, so you can see using this form, if I write my wheels up time here, I would add 51 minutes. And that gives me my destination ETE. ETA, rather, ETE being estimated time en route and ETA being estimated time of arrival. Um, what we're going to be doing at each uh, step here is re-estimating re the ETA based on the past, uh, the times that we've, we've been. So here we're going to go from uh, CYRO to set HP, SHP. P to Carlton Place, and then C Place to uh, Memory, Memory, Perth. So we need some distances here. So if I go from my set heading point again, uh, get this the right way, I want uh, nautical miles. Um, I want to know what the distance is to here. It's really to the town of Carlton Place. I could have done to the airport, but it's not easy to identify. So that's 17 nautical miles. So distance remaining would be 17. And sorry, that's not true. Sorry, distance is 17. We'll calculate distance remaining in a minute. And here it is. Um, 15 in this case and go back to Carlton Place here um, to Kingston we have uh, 50 57 so that would be 57 and from Perth we have uh, 40 43 43 looks like 42 Two. Okay, good. So we've got essentially what we need to go. So let's say um, the other thing I need to do is I need to set up my uh, E6B, my poolies, with my ground speed, expected ground speed. So my expected ground speed is going to be 110. So I'm actually going to set it up with that. Uh, where's my one mark here? So 110. With 110 mile over 60 minutes, so that's 100 knots, 110 knots. So let's say, for argument's sake, for argument's sake, that we depart at 10 a.m. 
We expect to be at, therefore, at Kingston at 1051. Now, by the way, I would normally add, just outside the scope of this, I would probably add 15 minutes, yeah, 15 minutes here for my flight plan time. Uh, and in fact, I would do that, but not for my necessarily for my destination ETA, uh, because just the time it takes us to do arrive at Kingston, do a circuit, etc., and then land and actually be ready to close our flight plan is probably going to take us 15 minutes. So just experience says, plan that in, build that into your plan. And when you file your flight plan, build that extra 15 minutes has been my experience in the time that you say you will be there. So you're not caught short in terms of closing your flight plan. That's an aside, of course. Um, I haven't put in the compass heading and then uh, flight plan because I don't know what the compass heading is. The altitude would be 4,500, 500, 4,500. So time over. So let's say we depart at uh, 10 o'clock and it takes us 10 minutes to get to our time uh, to um, our set heading point, Constance Lake. So it takes 10 minutes. So 10 minutes plus 41 minutes, our required time, our revised ETA is going to be, so on time over would be 1010 plus 41 would be 1051. Hey, great. Our revised ETA is right on. Um, so time over, I transfer over to here, 1010. And then now I'm going to do, uh, to get to Carlton Place, Let's say uh, that it takes us uh, 15 minutes. I'm sorry, so it's 15 minutes would be 10.25. So 10.10 10 minus 10.10, 10, that's 15 minutes. And then we've done a distance of 17, but so that gives us possibly, if I check my distance of uh, 17 here. Oh, mm, my distance is 17. And uh, that says I should have, it should have taken me only a little bit over, it should have taken me only a little bit over nine minutes to get there. Well, that's not good. It actually took me 15 minutes. So what's my actual, uh, what's my actual speed? Well, that means I actually, my ground speed was actually um, 68. It's very different from what I expected. Why could this be? Well, maybe I got delayed. Maybe maybe the winds are very different from what I think they are. Uh, maybe I don't have my power setting right. All sorts of things. Anyways, as it, so that's the case. So my ground speed now is actually 67. 68, actually. 68. So how long is it going to take me to do 57 miles. Well, it's pretty easy. 57 is going to take me 50 minutes. Well, this is not good. So 1025 plus 50 minutes is uh, 50, 25 plus 50 is 75. So that is one hour and 15 minutes or so 15. Carry one, it would be 1115. So now we're going to be uh, 20 minutes, 25 minutes late. Eesh. That's not good. Um, perhaps we should call, um, well, we should be certainly worried about why this happened, what happened there, what did we, maybe we miscalculated our time, we maybe readjusted. Let's go for one more uh, checkpoint and see what happens here. So we transfer over our, our time here, 1025. And um, and then we measure our, our what time it is when we pass this over Perth. And let's say that it actually is uh, 1037. I'm just making these numbers up, so, you know. Uh, so that's 12 minutes. And we did, uh, we did in 15 minutes, we did 12, sorry. Took us 12 minutes to do 15 miles. So I'm just going to set this up again here. So 15 up there took me 12 minutes. 
So now my uh, ground speed looks like it's 75. Well, that's better, but it's still certainly not what I expected. And now I have um, my ground speed is 75. And I have now 42 miles to do. 42, so it's going to take me 30, 30, 30, 38 minutes. So 30, 37 plus 38 is 5, carry 1, 7. No, no, that doesn't make sense. There's no 7, so that would be 1. Carry 1 again, so that would be 11. Oops. Sorry, 37 plus. So I'll need that. For that, I'm going to need a calculator. For some reason, right now, I'm blocking it. So 37 plus. Um, plus 38 equals 75. Okay, so that was right. So one, one, one hour and 15, which, which I add to uh, 1037. So that is, no, one, one hour and 13, which I add to 37. So 37 plus, ugh. All right, so it's going to take me uh, 42 minutes, which I add to 37, so 38 minutes, which I add to seven, so 1 hour 15, um, so 1 hour, so that's 11 15. 15. So that's still not good. Um, and then, um, so this basically tells us that at that point we should definitely be calling our friends at, um, our friends at flight services to tell them that we're going to be late unless we may be able to reach Kingston, but I doubt it at this point in time. So that's essentially how we pull together a uh, a flight plan in a, at least a flight, one flight plan leg using a variety of different tools to do it. As you can see, we can use, um, we use essentially this side here to do our calculations, quite easy. If we're in the airplane to just move move the the, the wheel around we started with our, air, our our ground speed was 110 and then we found that it was actually for some reason closer than to 68 this shouldn't happen normally but and then we found that it was back it was 75 so all of these things that we're that we're verifying and using uh, using one hand not worrying about batteries and then um, and then we're good. So thank you for watching. I hope this, uh, you found this interesting. You may want to pursue and, and practice this. These forms are available online and then, um, you know, practice makes perfect. And there's this particular case, it's well worth practicing doing them because you'll be surprised how quickly your time, um, is, is takes much less time to do the, the calculation than it would the first time. So, Thanks for watching and uh, comments always appreciated. Bye for now.